Chairman Cole, Ranking Member Lee, members of the subcommittee, thank you for the opportunity to appear before you. I'd like to set the tone for my remarks with a brief video. Hi, I'm a T-Mobile MyTouch 4G. And I'm an iPhone 4. Who's your friend? Oh, it's the old AT&T network. That'll slow you down. That's the price I pay for 3G speed. Bummer. 4G with T-Mobile lets me video chat practically anywhere. Well, iPhone 4 can FaceTime video chat from anywhere there's Wi-Fi, like, say, an airport. You know, you suddenly feel heavier. The new T-Mobile MyTouch 4G. Video chat without needing Wi-Fi. On America's largest 4G network. T-Mobile. That commercial illustrates the situation we have today. A vibrant national market in which four companies feel free to sell consumers high-tech services while making fun of their competitors. However, if the merger of AT&T and T-Mobile comes to pass, the wireless market will be transformed to something quite different. We will go back to the days when this phone was in use. Only two companies ruled the cellular phone market, resulting in high prices for consumers and little innovation. In 1993, a year after this phone came to market, Congress created the wireless market we now enjoy by empowering the FCC to auction spectrum and create more competition. That policy worked. Prices dropped, innovation exploded, consumers benefited. Over the years, industry consolidation has gradually eroded that competition. But if this deal goes through, that era of competition and innovation will come to an end. Consumers know this already. Almost 5,000 individuals have written to the FCC in their own words to object to the combination of the number two and number four wireless carriers. T-Mobile customers are irate. A poll on T-Mo News, a blog for T-Mobile customers, shows that 77% or about 7,300 consumers are opposed to the deal after just a couple of days. After the deal was announced, people emailed and called public knowledge unsolicited, asking what they can do to stop the transaction from going forward. More than 1,000 people have signed our petition. These are not AstroTurf campaigns. These are real Americans seeking to preserve competition in a lower-priced competitor that rates far higher than AT&T in customer satisfaction. If this merger is approved, two vertically integrated companies will control nearly 80% of the market. Sprint will have just 16% and will instantly become a takeover target. We should not go back to the future, back to duopoly. Worse than duopoly is monopoly which is what would happen to GSM-based wireless services in the U.S. post-merger. GSM handset manufacturers would be forced to negotiate with one national company, the new at and t and t Applications developers would also be subject to a limited non-competitive market. Remember that while T-Mobile was the first carrier to sell devices using the open Android operating system, at and has a history of blocking innovative applications. I cannot stress enough that each of the supposed benefits of this merger can be accomplished without removing a low-cost, innovative competitor. If AT&T is concerned about spectrum capacity, it could stop operating three different types of networks, an inefficient system which, according to one analyst, results in 70 to 90 percent of its spectrum being underused. Completely unused is one-third of its spectrum in the top 21 markets. Allowing AT&T to buy T-Mobile for the purpose of improving its inefficient networks and upgrading to 4G services would reward AT&T for failing to invest adequately. If AT&T wants to bring service to rural areas, it is free to do so, and they can do so now without any constraint. There are no spectrum shortages in rural America. AT&T is planning to spend $39 billion on this merger, money that could instead be spent investing in its network and bringing better service to more Americans. If AT&T wants to create jobs, it can do so without buying out a low-cost competitor. One would be hard-pressed to find a merger that resulted in job growth, and this one will be no different, as thousands of workers in retail stores, call centers, and sales staffs will be let go. This transaction is a pivotal moment in U.S. antitrust law. If that law means anything, this classic merger of one company buying out a smaller competitor in the same business must be denied. There are no conditions or divestitures that can make this deal acceptable. This merger is unfixable. I urge the members of the subcommittee to oppose this merger after reviewing the facts. Thank you, and I look forward to your questions.